Welcome back. Time to talk Bulldog track and field. And with us, head coach Jared Kelsch. And first of all, Jared, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rob. Been a busy spring uh, here for the Bulldogs. Had a chance uh, to take part in a, a number of meets. Uh, just, just talk about how the spring competition has went so far. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's been a little bit hectic. Um, you know, with with the weather, uh, kind of going back and forth, we've we've had some cancellations, so we've had to jump into some some last minute meets. Um, you know, they definitely worked out in our favor. Um, you know, we had Michigan State canceled and ended up going down to Bellarmine, Kentucky. Um, had some really good weather down there and a lot of great performances. Um, so, you know, out, outside of having a, a schedule that's all over the place, we've, we've done a really, really good job of uh, being consistent in our training and really just making the best of every opportunity when we, when we get the chance to race. So. You mentioned kind of all over the place. Uh, you've had a chance to go to Ohio, to Louisville, uh, Elma, obviously Grand Valley this past weekend, but a, a chance to see a number of different uh, schools and competitors. Yeah, yeah it's, it's always huge when you can um, travel around and see teams that you, you don't always see. Um, you know, because then you're not getting that uh, week in, week out, uh, same feeling of seeing the same teams at the same venues. Um, you know, so it's, it's big when we travel around a little bit and um, compete against teams that are not in our league or, or you know, are not in our division. So um, it's, it's really huge for us to, to try to find one or two big meets a year, um, take our kids to, and, and that's the one where we try to hit a lot of um, provisional or national standards. This past weekend, a little closer to home, uh, down at Grand Valley State, the Al Owens Classic. Uh, talk about how uh, the performances went this past weekend. Uh, performances this weekend were good. Uh, very good weather. Um, we had some, specifically some javelin throwers that threw some PRs and discus. Um, we had a lot of our, our 5K kids step down um, and run huge PRs in the, in the 1500. Um, had a lot of freshmen who have only raced once or twice this year outdoors um, and, and really made the most of it. Um, you know, running running huge PRs, uh, 25, 30 second PRs in the in the men's 5K. So, um, you know, all around the the whole weekend uh, couldn't have gone better. Uh, especially being so close to the GLIAC championships. You know, we're we're two weeks away right now, so um, we're we're really in a good spot, I would say, um, moving forward. As, as as long as we can stay healthy over the next two weeks, um, we're, we're really looking forward to to you know competing at the conference championships. So. This week, or this meet this past weekend, named after Al Owens, a longtime West Michigan uh, person uh, who's heavily involved in track and field. Yeah, Al's a great guy. Uh, he's been starting races in the in the you know Midwest for I, I would say uh, more, probably more than 25, <laughs> 30 years. So um, you know he's he's a guy that's uh, always there to help you out if if, if you need him, and uh, you know and kind of has had a big impact on our kids. Our kids get to know him because we do see him on a you know, a weekly basis, no matter where we go, because he travels around. He's retired, um, so to speak, but uh, does travel around the Midwest to to be a starter, and uh, you know, is, is very popular and, and friendly. And our our athletes uh, really like him, and uh, just just a great overall guy. You mentioned earlier the GLIAC Outdoor Championships. The Bulldogs uh, will host the GLIAC Outdoor Meet May 4th through the 6th at Top Taggart Field. Uh, just talk about uh, the the implications of that meet. 800 plus student athletes uh, that'll be on hand. Uh, yeah, huge event. Um, you know, having that many student athletes in in our town. Uh, you know, just as as far as the impact on our on Big Rapids with the restaurants and um, you know the the hotels and um, you know just being able to accommodate that many people plus spectators is uh, is going to be big for Big Rapids. Um, you know, we have a brand new uh, outdoor track, so um, we're very excited to host. We haven't hosted since 2010, um, and and you know. It, kind of gives us a, a leg up, so to speak, for our kids. Um, you know, they get to sleep in their own beds. We don't have to travel. Um, they get consistency with their food of and, and training for that week as opposed to being on the road and, and kind of having to pick and choose um, when we're going to take advantage of practices and meals and, and things like that. So kind of gives us a little bit more consistent feel um, because this is something we do every day, you know, on a weekly on a weekly basis. So um, it'll be big for our kids to be at home in, in front of uh our students and our fans. Certainly, uh, from a from a volunteer perspective, it takes a, a lot of individuals to, to make a meet like this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, volunteers, you really can't get enough of them. Um, it, it's really better to have too many than than not enough. Um, you know, just having so many events that we participate in. Um, you know, as a general rule, every every event you need three or four volunteers. So um, when you look at it that way, plus all the behind the scenes stuff of um, you know things going on in the press box and, and uh, hurdle crews and um, you know ticket sales and, and things like that, um, 
volunteers are huge in, in making this event uh, work. So, um, you know, we, we've had very good luck in the past and uh, just have a great community and they're uh, super supportive of, of track and field and running. So, um, you know, they've been very, very helpful to this point of uh, giving us support and, and kind of helping us out. So. I know before uh, the GLIAC Championships, uh, you've got one more weekend of action uh, here coming up. Uh, talk about uh, well, what's ahead uh, here for the Bulldogs as you get ready to train for that GLIAC uh, Championships. Uh, yeah, this week we're, we're going to go down to Hillsdale. Um, that's a very competitive meet. That's uh, a another one of our big ones where we like to try to get some good performances in before the GLIAC Championships to, to get us into better heats. So um, they've had a, a good track um, record of, um, you know, hosting a huge meet that brings in uh, everybody from Olympic caliber performers to, you know, NAIA Division Three. So um, it really does kind of cover the spectrum and it gives all of our kids an opportunity to, to be competitive no matter whether they're all Americans or they're first year runners. Um, you know, it, they just have such a wide range of, of competition there that um, it, and it's such a big meet that all of our kids are, are able to compete and, and be competitive no matter where they're at on, on the competitiveness scale. I so. know, obviously, I uh, have a lot of young, a lot of young kids. Uh, talk about the transition from the indoor season to the outdoor season and, and how they've handled that. Uh, yeah, having a lot of, of younger kids is, um, is always fun because there is that transition of, okay, now instead of doing the two mile that you might do in high school, especially if they're distance runners, um, you're up to a 10K. Uh, so, you know, running four more miles and, and training for that, that your weekly mileage uh, changes, your diet changes, um, you know, same thing with the throws. It's a, uh, it's a different weight implement that you throw. Um, so that takes some getting used to, uh, you have to spend more time in the weight room. Um, but our kids have done a fantastic job of, um, really just kind of buying in and, and knowing this is what we need to do in order to be successful. Um, you know, we kind of use in indoors is a springboard to, to outdoors and we really look to be competitive outdoors and try to go to some bigger meets so um, like I said our, our kids have taken advantage of every opportunity we've we've given them this year um, to compete and, and to run PR so we've we've had a very successful season this far and I'm really looking forward to the next two weeks. Finally uh, talk about some of those goals for the next two weeks as you, as you get ready to, to wrap up uh, this the spring season. Uh, yeah we, you know we, Team goals, um, certainly with being in uh, this competitive of a conference, um, we, we want to go out there and compete. We'd like to make finals, um, have our kids in you know, everything from sprints to throws, distance events, uh, make finals. Um, everything from the 1,500 meters on down has a prelim. Um, so essentially it's just getting past Thursday and into Friday's finals using the least amount of energy possible, um, knowing that you're going to be racing the next day. Um, that's where some of our older kids will who've uh, done this before will have a little bit more experience of racing two days in a row or, you know, two or three events. Um, so that'll, that'll kind of give them the, the benefit there. Um, but we have, we have a lot of kids who are right on, knocking on the door of national provisional qualifiers um, and, a, and a couple of kids who have thrown that already um, or are really close to running that. So um, big two weeks for us. Um, we're kind of tapering down now and, um, you know, making our mileage a little bit lower and, kind of increasing the intensity a little bit um, and, and just trying to stay fresh over the next two weeks and, and staying healthy and going out and competing. So, Well, Jared, thanks for your time. Best of luck. Bulldogs hosted the GLIAC Championships May 4th through the 6th at Top Tiger Field. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.